In this video, I'm trying to replicate a folded, a ripple folded curtains like the ones that you see here, uh, because they might be in some occasions where you need uh, to create an effect like this one. Even when you are creating flags uh, for your own games, uh, you don't need to uh, purchase these kind of meshes. You can create these meshes by yourself using Unreal 5.3 and the new modeling tool. Let's get to the matter at hand, but before that, be sure to like, subscribe, and comment. Don't forget to join our mailing list on woolen.com to get our video game related courses with coupons only available to our subscribers. Our next course is about level design, and you will receive a discount code in release week only by subscribing to woolen.com, which, by the way, is free. To start this section, I just added a new scene. I opened a project using Unreal 5.3 and I started a new, very simple scene. And now, first of all, I am going to add a texture that will represent this curtain that I'm going to create. So let's go to add and to the Quixel content. And in the Quixel content, you have a couple of options. You can find something like carpet, uh, which gives you a lot of different uh, styles of things that you can use. And you can also use a uh, fabric and try to identify if in fabric you, you could find a, a fabric that, that you might like. In my case, I am going to the carp with the carpet. And in the carpet, I'm going to take this one. I like this one in particular. So I already downloaded. I'm going to add it to my project. Now that I have it on my project, we're going to use it in just a second. Now I am going to add, using the modeling tool, I'm going to add a rectangle. So let's use this rectangle. I am going to rotate 90 degrees on Y, move it to the top, good, move it to one side like this one, excellent. And in the proportions, let's talk about the proportions right now, we have five meters tall. I think it's, it's a good idea uh, because let's say that this curtain will be part of a big hole. Uh, and in the width, is we're going to have a one meter, it's a good reference. Now. There is one thing to consider here, which are the subdivisions. So right now, you just have one subdivision here by in, in width and one subdivision in depth. I want to have a multiple subdivisions because if I don't have it, then I can work with the, um, with the geometry of this object. And I want to play with the geometry of this object. So at this moment, I'm going to create, let's say, 10 subdivisions on every side. And let's accept it at this moment. If you go to the attributes and you want to inspect the object, there here you can see all the subdivisions this object has. And you require them because you are going to start deforming this object. Now let's do the deformation. Let's go to the part of the deformation. Selecting the object, click on deform, and then I will take vertex sculpt. In vertex sculpt, I want to use something very, very tiny. And let me get to a space like this one. As you can see, we have uh, what we're going to do on the top is going to happen on the bottom. I want to have it this way. If you don't, if you don't want it, just remove this symmetry. At this moment, I want to have it. And let's start working with this. So I'm going to, let's say, create a, a line like this one and another line like this one, and another line like this one, right? And now I am going to accept. So as you can see, you have the curtain. If you needed more details, what you can do is add more geometry to the object. But at this moment, it's something very, very close to what I want to achieve. Now, the next part is just to add for me the uh, material. So let's take this material that we have here, or take the texture is going to transform it into an instance material. But in this case, let's add the material, drop it here. And as you can see, at this moment, the material is, I think is too big uh, for what I want to create. So I will go to the UVs, and in the layouts UV, I am going to move the scale. So you can set the scale, originally I think it was one, I can set the scale to, let's say, five, something around that. It makes more sense for me in terms of being a curtain. So here you, you have uh, the effect that 
uh, we want we were talking about now at this moment you will all, uh, this curtain will only be rendered from the top uh, from the front if you want to go to the back as you can see there is no rendering it's going to be literally transparent let's say that you don't want that let's say that for example it's a flag that is hanging from the wall and you want to be rendered on both sides well, in this case, it's not about the static mesh that you created, but about the material instance that you use. So we're going to open the material instance. And in the material instance, we will go to the original material, which is this one here, which is a surface material. So let's go to this surface material. Here it is. And in this surface material, uh, I recommend you, in any case, to uh, make a copy of this surface material so you don't mess if, in case this material is used for other, uh, other things. And in this case, you're going to select two-sided material. So now this material will be rendered on every side of the object. As I told you a moment ago, it is important that if you're going to use it for a curtain or a flag, you set, you create a new material just for that one or an instance of that material to avoid using this in other occasions where you don't need to render both sides. So now we change the material and now at this moment you have the curtain both sides render. Don't forget to like, subscribe and comment. Remember that by joining Woolen.com you will get access to huge discounts on our courses and first-hand free content to boost your career in video games and Unreal. To support my channel beyond, you can visit my Patreon to help me expand my team of editors. Thank you for being on the other side of the screen. I'll see you later. Cheers.